Well, good morning and welcome to worship at the Greencastle Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you're online to share with us this morning. And this is a very special service. Typically, we would celebrate this day as World Communion Sunday. Of course, we're in a pandemic. So we're going to have you do a time of Divine Presence Communion there where you are. And we'll lead into that a little later. We're grateful again that you're here. One more quick announcement, and then we'll have some rolling announcements. And that is that uh, the equipment for live streaming will soon be in. So we probably have a couple of weeks like this, and then the Sunday morning service you can see live, and it will be recorded so you can see it at a later time. So welcome and prepare your heart for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Lord God, open unto us. Open unto us light for our darkness. Open unto us courage for our fear. Open unto us hope for our despair. Open unto us peace for our turmoil. Open unto us <clears throat> joy for our sorrow. Open unto us strength for our weaknesses. Open unto us wisdom for our confusion. Open unto us forgiveness for our sins. Open unto us love for our hates. And open unto us yourself for ourselves. Lord God, open unto us. 
Amen. join me for the prayers of confession. God of wonder, your works are mighty and your promises never failing. Yet we turn from you, wanting the promise to come too quickly. Not understanding the depth of your mercy, we become impatient and demand everything now. As we wait for your work in our lives and in our world, we ask your forgiveness in our impatience. Open our hearts. We pray for your peace to enter them. Give us faith and confidence in your goodness and your care. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Oh, God. 
Good morning, GPC. So today, friends, we are talking about keeping our eyes on the prize. So you can see here, I have a trophy. We have a lot of these in our house. I'm sure you do too. This one happens to be for baseball. I wonder what kind of trophies you have. Soccer, basketball, baseball. There's lots of them out there. And how do we earn those? Well, we work hard and we follow the rules and we practice. And that's the goal, right? We want to win. Of course, we want to have fun too. But lots of us are striving to get one of these to take home. In today's lesson, we're talking about Paul and him trying to reach his goal. He wasn't trying to win a trophy. Let's listen to the reading, Philippians 4, 12 through 14. I do not mean that I am already as God wants me to be. I have not yet reached that goal. But I continue to try to reach it and to make it mine. Christ wants me to do that. That is the reason Christ made me his. Brothers, I know that I have not yet reached that goal, but there is one thing I always do. I forget the things that are past. I try as hard as I can to reach the goal that is before me. I keep trying to reach the goal and get the prize. That prize is mine because God called me through Christ to the life above. So I think what the message is trying to teach us is that our goal, our trophy, should be a life in heaven. We should all try to win this prize. Well, not a trophy, right? We should be working hard, and here's what we can do every day. We can use this, and it's full of rules. Just like when we play a sport, there are lots of rules. The Bible has rules, too, that we should try to follow. Of course, God forgives us when we forget, but every day, we should try. Rules like Put God first, love one another, always tell the truth, do not cheat, be happy with what you have. So we have to practice every day. We have to practice just like we practice our soccer or baseball or basketball. We have to practice to be a good Christian. And most important, we can't quit. Let's pray. God, thank you for helping us to be good Christians and helping us to win the most important prize, the trophy of heaven, when all is through. Amen. I invite you to a time of prayer as we prepare our hearts for the rest of the service. There's many needs we have, and you have some, and some prayer requests too. For reasons of confidentiality, I won't broadcast online specific names, uh, but I ask you to be in prayer, and I'll give you space for your own prayers. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It is such a gift to be together that wherever we are, we are connected in heart and soul and spirit with so many others, that your church is not a building, it's a people connected by your Holy Spirit through Christ. So we are truly privileged to have such an amazing relationship. And we are never far away from you. We are nearer to you than even the breath in our own lungs. Help us, Lord, to focus on you in this time. There are many needs, and there are needs in the church, in the community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. We ask especially that you'd be with those who are working in healthcare, especially those developing and researching for vaccines for this COVID virus, but also the people working on the front lines with people who have contracted it, and particularly in the schools and colleges where that has become a problem, guide all of those staff, faculty, students, administration, be with them. Guide the young men and women who wear the uniform of our country and whom we place in places of harm and danger, and some are exposed to this virus, and pray your protection to be with them as well. And guide us, not only in this nation, but in this world, because all of this world belongs to you. As children, we learned that, that you got the whole world in your hands. And on this World Communion Sunday, remind us that we are intimately connected with you and one another through Christ. Hear now our prayers for those we care for and love, 
who need your help and grace. We intercede on their behalf and ask your help and grace and blessing would be with them. We give you thanks because you, we know you hear us always through Jesus, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the Gospel of John, beginning in the 15th chapter, the first verse. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He prunes off every branch of me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be yet more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must abide in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If one abides in me and I in them, they will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, they're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The night that Jesus spoke these words that we've just read in the 15th chapter of John was a time as frightening and as chaotic as his disciples had ever experienced. At the supper table where they had celebrated the Passover. After washing their feet, Jesus told them that he was going to leave them, but it was for good, a good purpose. He was preparing for their future. They were not tuning in. Their alarm bells were going off, and that was all they were hearing. They just couldn't hear anything else. So after the meal, he asked them to go up to Gethsemane with them. And as they walked along late in the evening, what he sought to do was just calm them down, silence those alarm bells. And so he used a very common image, the image of the vine and the branches. Now that was an everyday in image because everyone who could have one, even if they had a postage stamp of ground where they lived, they'd had a grapevine. And they knew a lot about pruning grapevines for better yields. They knew that the fruit was the product of the work of the vine. And as long as it remained in the vine, it had everything that it needed because the vine was its source. And the fruit would come really with no effort on part of the grapes. It would just happen. And the vine was certainly an image that Israel had cherished for hundreds and hundreds of years. Abide in me, Jesus told them. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done for you. And what does a cluster of grapes need? Well, simply to abide to be connected to the vine. That's all it needs. Everything is supplied. It goes almost without saying that we are living in a time of great chaos. But the question to ask ourselves is, how do we live faithfully in a time with complicated events and issues and choices? If you think about it, 
We live in four different places in our everyday lives. This is where we relate to the world, to God, to ourselves, to others. There's that inner life, that place where we dwell, and all the developmental processes that go on all the days of our life, because no one is static. We are always growing, or you might be stuck, but you're still moving along, and we're moving forward to something. Time and age certainly determine much of our lives. So where are we with our own self? What's going on in me? Ask yourself, what's going on in your own mind? And we don't live to ourselves, we live with families, with friends, with people we work together with, in our community. And what's going on in those areas? Things are happening, changes, events, difficulties, problems. Those things are always going on. Sometimes they're no problem and sometimes they're a big problem. We also live in a larger world where we understand that we really are part of a global economy. We wear clothes made by hands that were shaped in Central America or East Asia. Your cell phone was probably made in China or possibly India. We drive cars that may have been assembled in Ohio or Detroit or Tennessee or even Alabama, but the parts were made in Brazil or Korea or China or Japan or Germany or Canada or one of a dozen other countries. Our food may have originated in Kansas. It may well have originated in Mexico or Brazil or Peru or China. So we've created a global economy or a part of that and what's going on in our world. A lot of stress, a lot of chaos. And when our lives seem stressed because there is chaos within our own soul or in our family or in our community or where we work or our country or our world, just everything seems to be out of control, adding to the stress. And what happens is we lose our center and we lose our peace. But there is one other place where we live, where our lives come together and we find our peace, that God has come to us in Christ to connect us to his life, to restore that center, to restore our peace. And this is where we begin to live faithfully in a time of chaos. We stay connected to God through Jesus. Now, we have a lovely grapevine in our home. I spent some time last winter and early in the spring pruning it back because basically grapes don't come from old growth. They come only from new growth. So the old growth is not needed anymore. And sometimes it seemed like I was taking away far too much. But if you want to encourage the fruit, that's what you have to do. And the vine from the root upward then sends all the resources through the branches to create those clusters of fruit that mature into just wonderful grapes. And all the grapes have to do is simply stay connected to the vine. The vine does all the work. So just a week or two ago, I harvested many, many beautiful clusters of grapes and they were so sweet. That's all we have to do, stay connected to our center and our center is found in God through Christ. That's how we live faithfully in a time of chaos, by abiding in Christ. In him we find our source, we find our life, we find our direction. Yesterday I watched my daughter cradle her 12 week old and all that baby wanted to do was to be held and be near her mother. She knows her mother's voice. She knows her mother's smell. She gets nourishment from her mother. And all she has to do is abide. It's a beautiful thing, actually, to see that. And to see the peace that she has of simply just resting in her mother's arms. Well, that's how God wants us to rest. So we're going to move into a time of divine communion where you can experience God's presence and in this time of pandemic, I know that we're still trying to figure out how to be sacramental. Our typical ways of sharing bread and wine pose yet some risk. And we don't want you to fret or worry over that, either in church or at home. Instead, we want you to rest and trust in God's presence and in his provision. So today, we'll take four or five minutes with you right there wherever you are, just to be in the presence of Jesus. After a prayer of preparation, I will lead you in a guided meditation and all you have to do is simply breathe 
and focus on Christ's presence. And it's my hope that you simply feel the peace of the moment and you may even experience his presence close to you. Abiding in Christ is how we live faithfully in chaos because in him we do not lose our grip. In him we find our source and our peace and the grace for this day. Amen. Almighty God, in the giving of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate, world, of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in this light and dwell in his love that we may know the fullness of his joy. Come to us now and meet us at this time when we seek to be filled with your presence through Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
I invite you to just relax and sit where you are and to close your eyes, to breathe deep through your nose if possible and then let your breath out through your mouth. And just close your eyes and deep breathe. Just focus on your breath. And just breathe. You're abiding. And as you're abiding, you can let some of the cares and worries that have bothered you today, just cast them aside. And as you sit there and you're breathing, as you just focus on your breath, that your breath is a gift from God who breathed into the first human and breathes into all of us. We breathe in, we breathe out. We let all that stuff go. As you're breathing, place yourself in the most pleasant place in your imagination that you can think of. It might be a walking path, a trail, the woods, the beach. It could be anywhere. Imagine the setting, the scenery, the time of day, and just breathe. In the distance, you see someone walking towards you. They seem somewhat familiar and you cannot quite make them out. The person comes closer and they're really familiar. You know them by heart. And you realize that it is Jesus himself. He greets you by name. He looks into your eyes. And the love that he has just melts your heart. There's a beautiful peace all around him. He invites you into a conversation. And you can say or ask anything of him in this moment. And then just wait for his response. His presence is so amazing, so peaceful. And you know that you are in communion with him. He speaks one more word in parting. And as you breathe deep, you feel such peace because you know he's been with you. And as you open your eyes and you just take a deep cleansing breath, you know that you have been in communion with Christ. Thanks be to God. We're really glad that you shared this time of divine presence and Holy Communion together today. And trust that you'd feel the peace of Christ with you always, and especially for this day. May you go in peace, walk in faith, and live in love, and serve with hands and hearts that show Christ to the world. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
后。